Okay, welcome to our worship this evening. Uh, this is our Lent midweek six service, and we're continuing with our service uh, based around our theme uh, from Lent about living among the Bible's trees. So let's simply begin our worship uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have two readings that I want to share with you that kind of set the theme for our message uh, this evening. The first one is from the fifth chapter of Galatians, uh, and Paul writes these words about how uh, Christ has set us free. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk in the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Here ends the reading. And then a passage from the seventh chapter of Matthew, uh, as Jesus speaks about a tree and its fruit. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. This is the gospel of the Lord. Now at this time we're going to continue with the hymn. Uh, if you happen to have a green hymnal there at home, you can open up uh, to hymn 272. Uh, abide with me and follow along. Even if you don't have a hymnal, I imagine many of you know uh, many of the words to this hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text uh, is from the reading uh, from Matthew 7 that we heard a couple of minutes ago uh, where Jesus says, Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. People sometimes have trouble picking out produce at the grocery store. Is that avocado not ripe enough, or is it too ripe? Is that orange going to be juicy? Is the texture of that apple going to be mealy? Now, standing at the store, we're mostly concerned about the fruit in front of us, and not so much about the tree that it came from, and yet the quality of the fruit depends on the quality of the tree. As we heard uh, our Lord Jesus say, every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. So as we continue our Lenten series, Living Among the Bible's Trees, we're considering good, good trees bearing good fruit and bad trees bearing bad fruit. By nature, I think it's fair to say that we are bad trees bearing bad fruit. That passage we heard uh, as our gospel reading for tonight comes in the middle of uh, what's known as the Sermon on the Mount. But Jesus is recorded speaking similar words uh, later on uh, in Matthew's gospel and then also in Luke's uh, gospel. And the passage from St. Paul, uh, his letter to the Galatians, is probably drawing both on Jesus' words and then some other similar teachings about faith and its fruit. Right? The idea of finding grapes on a vine and not on something like a thorn bush, or finding figs on a fig tree and not on something like a thistle plant might seem like kind of a no-brainer. But what is important for us is to recognize the good or bad nature of the tree by its fruit, and then the good or bad nature of the tree as the cause of the quality of the fruit. As Jesus says, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And that judgment is not only on some far off judgment day, but as John the Baptist said before Jesus, even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. But our good news for this evening is that God changes us into good trees bearing good fruit. The Lord says that a healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. So, in another place in Matthew, Jesus says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. But we can't really make trees good or bad, nor can we make ourselves as figurative trees. John the Baptist and our Lord Jesus call for fruits in keeping with repentance, and both John and Jesus' disciples baptized for that purpose. And for the sake of our Lord Jesus' death on the cross, God himself, working through his word and baptism and all its forms, changes us from being bad trees bearing bad fruit to being good trees bearing good fruit, fruit in keeping with with repentance. In that passage from Galatians that I read to you a few minutes ago, Paul says that we're called to freedom and that Christ has set us free. Christ sets us free by the truth of his gospel. The gospel that he, true God in human flesh, died on the cross for the sins of the whole world, including your sins and my sins. Christ substituted himself there on the cross for us. And as we hear God's call to repent, then God frees us from our slavery to sin and death and the power of the devil. So God makes us bad trees good, so that instead of bearing bad fruit, we bear good fruit, the fruit of justification and eternal life. So as we consider good trees bearing good fruit and bad trees bearing bad fruit, we realize that 
Although by nature we are bad trees bearing bad fruit, God changes us into good trees bearing good fruit. God has called us to repentance, and he's forgiven our sins by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. So from various sources, we might learn the necessary skills for using our senses and our reason to pick literal good trees, good fruit, right? Avocados, oranges, apples, whatever, in our local supermarket. But it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit, reaching past our senses and reason to our hearts, through his means of grace, that we can ever be good trees, ourselves bearing the good fruits of the Spirit that Paul describes in that first reading. Amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, let's join in prayer. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Okay, thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you again soon. Uh, if you have any particular prayer requests that you'd like lifted up, uh, you can reach us by email or call the church office and leave a message, and we'll make sure that we, we take care of that. And then, of course, just uh, remember also, as you are able uh, in these hard times, uh, please uh, make an effort to keep up with uh, offerings so we can keep the work of the church going. God's blessings.